Hey everyone, it's Rihanna again, second year SRNA, and today I'm here to make a video about the academic portion of CRNA school. I wanted to give you some insight into pre-planning, our course load, coursework, exam schedule, research project, and things like that, because a lot of people have questions about the academics, and I feel like I've covered clinical a lot and study tips a lot, but I haven't really covered what we're actually learning and how much we're actually learning. So I'm gonna start with going over the dreaded care plans or anesthesia pre-planning. They are nothing like nursing school, so don't worry. I know we all hated pre-planning and care planning in nursing school. It was the worst thing ever and took all night and it was never good enough. So these are much different. I'm gonna explain how. I'm also gonna show you a syllabus from one of our anesthesia classes right now so you can kind of get a feel for our reading assignments in our exam schedule, things like that. And then I'm also gonna show you our final research project and give you kind of an idea of what I'll be doing there. I don't 100% know everything I'll be doing because I'm in the very beginning stages, so I'm only gonna tell you what I know. This is obviously not an all-inclusive video. There's much more to CRNA school than this, but I just wanted to give you a brief overview. I'm gonna switch the camera over to my computer so you guys can see what I'm looking at, and let's get started. So here it is, the anesthesia plan. Now this whole first page is all the information that we look up while we're at the hospital the day before trying to plan on our patient. So I look up all this stuff and then I bring it home and I use this whole first page to make my anesthesia plan and fill out the rest of this. So the beginning is just demographics, weight, height, etc. And we move on to body systems. We list all the comorbidities and abnormalities here. And then we move on to surgical anesthesia history and family anesthesia history. Both are very important because some anesthesia reactions can be genetic. And we also need to know what surgeries this patient has had before. Then we move on to allergies. We list the reaction as well. And current medications, these all have implications in regard to your anesthesia plan. And then we move on to the patient's labs because those are very important as well, which I'm sure you know if you're a nurse or in nursing school. Then after all that's done, we come home, we move on to the implications, the physiological, pharmacological, and psychological implications regarding the anesthesia. So here we list everything that is wrong with the patient and what that means to our anesthesia plan, how we would alter our anesthesia plan or plan for this specific patient. So I'm just gonna show you an example right here. If the patient has hypertension, for example, I would wanna say keep the systolic blood pressure within 20% of baseline for renal perfusion. Now that is a standard number. Some people need to be lower, some have a little more leeway, but I'm just giving you an example. To say the patient's on metoprolol, I would say the patient's on metoprolol, so they should continue taking that medication, even take it the morning of surgery, and then they also have a higher risk of bradycardia and hypotension intra-op. Now I would then go into the details about how it would prevent bradycardia, how it would treat if it happens, etc. This would actually be a lot longer than what I'm writing right now, but I'm just showing you a really brief example. It's very focused on anesthesia. So then we'll move on to the next page. It's a continuation of the first page once we finish all that stuff. We then will want to list the surgical considerations for the procedure as well as the positioning because that has implications as well. We want to list the durations we can plan for long enough, the EBL, estimated blood loss, as well as the fire or safety score of the patient. And then after we do that, we move on to the proposed management, which is our anesthesia plan. Now, for example, we're going to do a general anesthetic with a ET tube. We would write that there. We move on to pre-op medications, antibiotics, intra-op things, as well as emergence, the fluid and blood therapy plan. That is what kind of fluids we're gonna use. There's several different calculations we use to figure out the um, hourly fluids that the patient is gonna need. ABL is allowable blood loss. And then underneath the ABL, we will write the post-op monitoring specific to the patient. Say they have sleep apnea or COPD, we wanna monitor their breathing very carefully, do continuous pulse ox and PACU, things like that. And then we move down to the comments. Now that is where we can write anything we said wrong for our anesthesia plan that we realized was wrong the next day. We also would have the CRNA sign here. They'll make comments as well. And we could just write anything there that we wanna remember for the future because we do save all these plans so that we can look at them when we do similar procedures. All right, that's it for the pre-planning. And now we're gonna move on to the class syllabus. All right, so I'm just showing you my syllabus for my cardiac class. Now pay special attention to the top. That's all the books we need to have, which just shows you that our readings come from everywhere and we have a lot of reading. We usually have about four to five topics per an exam, as you can see, and all the assigned reading is to the right of that. There's supplemental things as well, but this is what's actually assigned by the teacher and where she will grab our test questions from. So we have five tests in this class, and then we have a final exam. The final exam is cumulative, obviously. But really just, there's a lot of reading, a lot of review, a lot of exams. And if you can even imagine that we have like three or four of these classes at a time some semesters, it's a lot going on. You have to stay very organized. 
Now here is our final research project kind of guidelines. Um, I have not moved very far in my research project yet. As you know, I just got my topic approved. So I can't give you very many details, but I do wanna tell you that this is a huge project that involves an oral defense, a 20 to 30 page paper that we put into book form and a lot of time. It takes about a year to a year and a half to do and we need to do it to graduate past the written part and past the oral defense. So it's very important, it's very systematic, and it's very detailed. So I'm excited to do this actually to see what the results are, but it's gonna definitely be a challenge. Thankfully, our school is doing a really good job guiding us through the process. All right, everyone, that's it for my little insight into the academic portion of CRNA school. It obviously was just a brief overview. It was not all inclusive. We have several other classes. We have many other assignments and we have several other research projects that we do throughout school. I just wanted to address the final huge research project that determines if we graduate or not. No pressure. I also wanted to update you on my research project progress. That's like a tongue twister. I messed it up three times already. Anyway, I got my topic officially approved. Everybody on my committee signed off on it as well as the director, so it's set in stone now. Next, I'll begin my literature review and then I'll move on to my data collection next semester. So I just wanted to keep you guys up to date with that. I will keep updating you as I go because this is the first huge research project I've done, so I'm not really sure what to expect either. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, informative, and insightful. If you did like this video, this information style of video, please let me know. If you prefer the vlog style, let me know that as well because I really enjoy doing both and vlogs are fun to make also. All right, I'm gonna close out this video now. I actually have six anesthesia plans to do for my clinical on Monday. It is right now Saturday, so I need to get going on those. I've only done two so far and they're kind of long, so I'm gonna go. But I wanted to say thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, feel free to subscribe because I put out a new video every Sunday documenting my journey to CRNA school and giving information and tips about nursing, CRNA school, and whatever else you guys ask me, I will answer. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, and I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you very soon.